Good morning, everybody. Thank you very, very much for joining us uh, on what is a gorgeous morning uh, here in the Midlands. I hope it is where you are. Uh, I hope to find you safe, well, uh, and adjusting to uh, what is the new normal at this moment in time. Welcome to Taking Control of Your Finances. Uh, today's brought to you by uh, NatWest and the Royal Bank of Scotland in partnership with the fantastic Free Agent. Uh, and we're going to be going through, as the title might suggest, uh, some really, really good tools, techniques, and information to allow you to, to stay in control of and, and get the best out of your finances, particularly at the moment with the challenging situations that we find ourselves in. So I hope it's going to be a fun, engaging session. There is going to be a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, tech and a few different little techniques that we'll use to get you guys involved with us. It won't just be us talking uh, to you or, or at you for the session. Uh, so it is a little bit interactive just so that we get a sense of, of how we can uh, best help you. Uh, so please do uh, sit back, relax and enjoy. Uh, and uh, we'll look forward to, uh, to, to catching up with you and, and running through the session with you. So uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Josh Winfield. I absolutely detest that picture. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm really sorry about that, but it is nevertheless, nevertheless the one that I have to use. Uh, I am the Business Builder Manager for the NatWest Group. Uh, so if you're not familiar, our Business Builder Program is an online uh, digital accelerator supporting idea, early stage businesses right the way through to, uh, to, to businesses that are getting ready to grow and scale. Fully online program with wraparound events that we run digitally to help support your business uh, wherever you may need. And I have the privilege of looking after that throughout the UK. Uh, with me uh, on the call and taking you through the free agent aspect of today, we have the fantastic Liam Leask. Liam, uh, you're on the line. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Josh, and hello, everybody. Yeah, my name is Liam. I'm a senior support manager here at Free Agent. Um, I'm going to be taking some time to give you a bit of a demonstration about how Free Agent, in particular, but any cloud accounting software can help you take control of your finances a little bit later. Brilliant. Thanks, Liam. So as we go through today, uh, Liam's going to be taking you through, uh, as he said, an awful lot of, of tools and techniques that are uh, contained within uh, free agent and online accountancy software to allow you to, to really, really take control and feel comfortable when it comes to your finances. Now that word control is really, really interesting, and it's a word that keeps cropping up, uh, particularly with uh, the businesses and the entrepreneurs that I'm working with just now. And it's a really, really interesting one because control, as human beings, we like to feel in control that place from which a process or an activity is directed and particularly if we are uh, small business owners or if we're business owners in general we like to feel like we're in control and we don't particularly like to feel that we've lost it it's a very very uncomfortable sensation and so when we do when we find ourselves in situations such as the COVID-19 situation there is that human instinct to fight and to get it back quite understandably because when we're in control, we're in that comfort zone, that, that buzz term that I'm sure you've heard a million and one times, we're in that comfort zone, we know how things are operating, we know what should be where and when. And so we feel very, very comfortable, we feel very relaxed. And then when we come out of control, we feel very, very uh, anxious quite often, uh, a little bit fearful and, and, and all kind of emotions associated with that quite naturally. And if we don't go back to, to, to normality, when we're not in that situation, we've lost control, quite often we have to find uh, and do things that we don't feel as good at, we don't feel as com confident with, and we certainly don't feel as confident to attack with the same vigour as the things we would do normally. And so as a result, we may have a fear or an anxiety to do that and, and go through it. Now, what's actually at work there, that fear and anxiety that comes from having our, our businesses, our sales disrupted or our, our, our processes and our systems disrupted as a result of the situation we find ourselves in. That discomfort, that anxiety, that fear, whatever, um, whatever way and whatever emotion is manifesting itself with you is all actually a, a trigger of mindset. Now, mindset is a wonderful umbrella term uh, and it covers all manner of different uh, situations, behaviours and, and thought processes. But actually, it's a huge feature of what we do as part of the, uh, the, the Business Builder Programme and the NatWest Entrepreneur Accelerator, because mindset shapes everything we think and everything that we do. And so when we find ourselves out of control, when we find ourselves in a situation that makes us feel uncomfortable, quite often it's our mindset that's making that decision for us on the back of previous information or past experiences that we may have had. Now, the dictionary definition of mindset is the established set of attitudes and beliefs actually held by an individual. Now, it's true to say that we are the product of the five people we spend most time with. So at this moment in time, you're probably the product of your partner and two children, which is a little bit terrifying. But in general, um, we are the product of the five people we spend most time with. Never is that more true than when we are a child and when we're grown, growing up, because as a child, we're told not to answer back. We go to school, we're in a period of extended learning. And so we absorb a lot of information and quite often these shape our mindsets, behaviors and habits without us even realizing. I'll give you a great example. The first time that I was eligible to vote, I found myself going to uh, the polling station and voting in exactly the same way as my parents. 
there was no particular affiliation with the particular party. It was just the way I'd been brought up and so on and so on. Now, I didn't really realize that until I started to deliver content like this. And what it realized, made me realize is, blimey, if my mindset makes decisions like that for me uh, on the basis of absorbed information, how often does it uh, make decisions on the basis of my business? I, uh, I should say that I, I had an owned and operated my own business for about six and a half years. And so certainly a lot of the old mindsets that I inherited were, were from previous experiences. And it's quite often what we tell ourselves on the basis of those experiences that then perpetuates throughout our life. So I'll give you a great example. When I, went, when I was at school, I excelled at things like uh, music, uh, art, drama, English, all of those kind of things. And when it came to maths, not so much. I was always told that maths was not my strong point. And then that spilled over and that created a mindset shift with my business that actually, do you know what, finances, that's, that's an uncomfortable thing. I don't enjoy that. That's going to be the thing that I do last. And if I can find any way to skirt around it, that's going to be me. And so it was a very, very uncomfortable situation. And it's very often true that at one point, we may have had a weakness. We may have had an area where we didn't excel. And so we put that to bed and we've left it. And we don't tend to dig it up. But actually, what's more often true than not is that just because something was, was the case then, it may well not be the case now. And in situations like we find ourselves with COVID-19, we're having to face up to those difficult situations. Now, that can be difficult. That can be really, really uncomfortable. And as a general rule, human beings tend to react with one of two mindsets, fixed or growth. Now, it may be that you've come across these terms before. They're very, very well-known terms. And there's an awful lot written about fixed and growth mindset. But as a result, we tend to operate with one of these two. Now, it's worth noting at this point that I am not a fixed mindset individual and Liam is a growth mindset individual. We are both a lovable mass of contradictions all the time, as everybody is. And depending on those previous experiences, depending on our upbringing and past experiences as we've grown, we will have developed, developed fixed and growth mindsets about different things. And so as a result, they show themselves in how we operate our businesses. It stands to reason that we're going to perform the actions that we enjoy doing, we feel confident, and we feel like we have a natural ability and affinity with more in our business. And we're gonna perform them more readily than those that really feel like our kryptonite, like it takes everything you've got to get through it. It doesn't come naturally and so on and so on. It stands to reason. So, but as a result, those comfort zones take over in our business and it can start to feel very, very uncomfortable when we have to step out of them. And so in situations like COVID-19, which is undoubtedly incredibly challenging and there's some real tough decisions that have to be made, some, some, some tough obstacles having to be overcome, often the solution for businesses is to continue to, to, to operate differently or refocus their attention on different areas that may cause you to part ways with what you were hoping to achieve this year or may cause you to, to really approach things from a different angle. Quite often that can be something like repurposing products that you would sell normally face to face or through retailers and wholesalers in the high street to creating an online store. That can be a really, really uncomfortable behavior. Or equally, if you find yourself needing business support from the likes of the business interruption loan scheme uh, that, that's running and being offered at the moment in time, if finances are an area of real um, anxiety and not, uh, not a huge amount of, 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 of pleasure and regularity for you, then that can feel really, really uncomfortable as well. And so as a result, we tend to approach those with a fixed mindset. Now, a fixed mindset is the belief that character, uh, intelligence and creative ability are all um, very, very much um, uh, fixed. They're set. You're born with what you're good at. And that's it. A growth mindset, conversely, is very much a, a sense that you can grow through effort, application and experience. In other words, I am good. I am in control of what I am good and bad at. And so it's very, very important that in these situations, we have that perception and that desire to, to move on and do something differently from a mindset perspective. Challenge ourselves to go, I am in control of what I am. I'm good and bad. I have a fear or an anxiety over, and there is something that I can do about it. And so what's important is that either of the fixed or growth mindset behaviors come with a sense of discomfort or anxiety particularly if we find ourselves having to apply for uh, the business interruption loan scheme, or we find ourselves having to understand how we, we, we sell through a web channel. And so that discomfort and anxiety can hold us back from taking opportunities. It can hold us back from accessing support. And therefore all of those previous mindsets from whatever has led us to these particular assumptions and situations about ourselves come to the front of our minds. They make it very, very difficult to see past and see obstacles and see a way forward. But what's important to understand is that mindset is a spectrum. And just because you have maybe a, a, a fixed, fixed mindset about something now or a growth mindset about something now, it absolutely can change in both directions. Who's in control of that is absolutely yourself and who you are. So if your finances are down here at the minute through past experiences like mine were, 
every time it came to do anything like uh, uh, filling out tax forms, uh, completing profit and loss statements, balance sheets, so on and so on, I just had my maths teacher in my ear, in my head going, this really isn't for you. Why don't you look to, to do something else uh, and drop down to the lower set for GCSE and so on and so on. And that perpetuated my, my sense of belief and, and sense of self and absolutely my mindset when it came to my finances. Whereas when it comes to public speaking and doing something like this, I'm the, I'm the first one with my hand up. I absolutely love to do that and therefore it doesn't feel like a challenge for me. I'm always going to be there. What's important to remember is that there are going to be different situations and different events that happen to us that adversely shift that in either direction. But who's in control of that is we are. Now, as entrepreneurs, as a subsection or business owners, as a subsection of individuals, we tend to have the expectation of ourselves that we have to be good at everything and we have to be good at everything now. Now, in reality, that's a really, really unfair expectation. You wouldn't expect that of the staff that work for you. And if you worked in a, in a, in a sort of a larger environment, you probably wouldn't expect that of yourself or have that expected of yourself. And yet when we find ourselves at the helm of a business and when we find ourselves in control, that word again, we feel like there, there is that unfair expectation that we have to have the answers to everything. In truth, that's not, not a reality. It's not something that we should expect of ourselves. But what's important is that if you have the desire to grow, if you feel like actually, do you know what, I, I need to improve at that, then no, I'm not going to be able to improve now, but I am in control of that process. And so if I'm right at the bottom of one of those pits there on that graph moving around, then I can't jump to the top of one of them, but I am in control of the first step I'm going to take. What is the first step I can take to be in control of that situation so that it feels less uncomfortable, so that it feels less scary? And so it's all about finding the right support and guidance. And then when we get that support and guidance, it's about being open and honest with ourselves around where extra challenge and accountability and support is needed. How do we put those into practice? And what's important is that needing support, it's not a weakness or accessing tools to make our life easier, to exploit um, an opportunity or a situation. That's not cheating. And yet as entrepreneurs and business owners, we tell ourselves that actually, do you know what support, you know, finding that support, that's not really for me. That's not part of the entrepreneurial vernacular or finding access to tools and support and techniques. That's, you know, that's not right. That's, that's an unfair advantage. That's not true. And in reality, the difficult situations and how we react to them is how we can measure, measure and separate ourselves from the other individuals and the other businesses that we work with. And so it's really, really around accessing that information, having that correct response and going, however you respond to that situation is going to have a direct impact on the outcome. Acknowledging that and going, if you think about and when you in, in, encounter a Seabills application form of that process and go, that's really tough, that looks really scary going yeah that's just not for me I'll, i need to find somebody else to do that or or that's just not something that i'm going to be able to do i'm going to mess that up that that's a that's a, a fixed mindset response but that is an actual that's a personal choice on the basis of what we believe we're allowing ourselves to think like that and so what's important is that we just start to turn that response around and go okay this, uh, the business interruption loan scheme is something that could really really support me that is an area of of anxiety or that's an area where i don't feel particularly confident what support is out there and how can I how can I do that? And how can I access that? And how can I make that work for me? Now, certainly, I think it's fair to say that there's a lot of individuals that are having to focus more on their finances just now. And it would be really, really interesting. In just a moment, I'm going to launch a poll just to get a sense of who is spending more time forecasting their finances at the moment versus normal. And it'd be really, really interesting if you could just vote with uh, the options that appear in front of you just to get a sense of, of, of how true that is. Uh, and quite interesting, actually, to understand if there's more of a sense of anxiety around that uh, than, uh, than there perhaps was before. So the votes are coming in thick and fast. Thank you for those. I'll give you about another 20 seconds to do so. Okay, there's plenty of votes coming in. Just another sort of five, 10 seconds left. Okay, I think we have uh, sort of an out and out response there. So thank you. The results will be on your screen in just a second. As you can see that it's, it's fair to say that there's quite uh, more, certainly more than half the, the, the group are, are, is, is answering with a yes to that, either a little bit more or significantly for. And I think that's, that's fair to say. Um, there's, it's quite interesting that there's a good spectrum there, but I, could, I should imagine that those that have voted yes, you know, a little more, and, and yet yeah, this is having a little bit more importance. Maybe there is a little bit more um, 
uh, understanding that you're having to garner or, or, or gather or really, really upskill, upskill in certain areas to allow you to make the most of it. I can imagine that that's sometimes fraught with a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of, um, you know, treading, walking on eggshells. And so finding that support, helping you overcome these, these mindset challenges for, for good so that they, they, they cease to become a, a barrier for ourselves so that they become an area actually, of, do you know what? I quite enjoy working with my finances now. I feel really in control of them. It's around finding that support. And one such organization and one such man who's really, really good about uh, delivering support and, and simplifying what it is that we, we have is Liam from Free Agent. So Liam, I am, uh, I'm gonna hand over to you uh, as and when you are ready. What an introduction. Uh, thanks very much, Josh. So yeah, as I already mentioned, I'm uh, currently uh, working as a, a senior support manager here at Free Agent. And in a previous life, um, like Josh as well, I actually spent many years um, working um, as a small business owner and being self-employed. So what I'd like to do today is to continue on from this theme of taking control of your um, finances and focusing on what you can control that Josh has highlighted. I'd like to take you through some sort of practical steps from what I've learned in my time at Free Agent, from what I've learned in my time in business and also in studying um, accounting and finance as well. So I'm not going to dwell <clears throat> on, on this sort of situation as we know it's a tough time for businesses at the moment and um, what I hope to do today um, is sort of show you how to bring together some useful information on business, on your business, to help you make informed decisions. And we know that cloud accounting software in general is useful for this. I'll be highlighting a few of these sort of points. Um, but being from Free Agent myself, I'm going to show you where you can find these figures and um, that you might need to fill out the, the CBILS, the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme application form um, that Josh mentioned um, in your Free Agent account. It will be similar in a lot of other softwares and you might be able to sort of see even if you don't have cloud account software where you can find that information as well and also i'm going to be um you know highlighting where you can sort of get these figures up to date we know that it's difficult it's it's time consuming a lot of small business owners don't have time or haven't had time in particular to keep their finances up to date so i want to highlight how you can use free agent or, or another um, cloud accounting software tool to sort of help you keep your finances up to date so you can see a real-time view. Um, free Agent's free for NatWest and Royal Bank of Scotland uh, business customers as well. So we want to sort of highlight that you can take advantage of this for free, which might be particularly useful at this moment as well. Can I get the next slide, please, um, Josh? Thank you. So I'd like to start just by highlighting a, sort of a few of the main benefits of using a cloud accounting solution. Um, especially for those of you who perhaps don't use one currently, um, but also so that maybe those who do can maybe get a little bit more out of it. And one of the main ways it can help you look after your business finances is by allowing you to work from, um, on them anywhere you are. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can work on your finances anywhere. You don't need to be in the office. Many small business owners will sort of find it difficult at the time to sit down actually at their desk and work on their finances, and it's a bit of an obstacle for them. Um, and it's often done last minute or even not at all. And software really helps us break down that barrier and makes it easier to work on from anywhere, especially with things like mobile phone apps as well. Likewise, it allows you to collaborate with your colleagues and your accountant without needing to be in the same place or send emails back and forth to each other. You basically give everybody login credentials. You can choose what permissions they have, what they'll be able to see and do in your account. And you'll be able to collaborate and work on your business finances together in one place. And many small business owners understand what it's like to lose control of um, who you owe money to and who owes you money. Um, one of the ones that used to terrify me was not knowing what my tax bill was going to be and what money I needed to set aside. And to cover those upcoming tax bills, it was always a bit of a fright come year end or you know, January time. With cloud accounting software, you should be able to have access to that information at any time, which is another thing that's going to make sure that you remain in control. In regards to reports, I certainly remember myself handing my accountant a shoebox full of receipts and then him sort of working his magic and producing these marvelous reports at year end, which would give me historical information. But I didn't have actually access to real-time information and easy, simple to understand accounting reports on a day-to-day -day basis. And cloud accounting software lets you do that. And I'm going to take you in to show you what, how you can get the most out of these reports in free agent in particular. Um, 
as a sort of a selling point of free agent, we certainly try to make sure that it's user friendly. It's easy. We um, try and avoid jargon. Um, try and keep things in plain English and make it easy to use, which again is breaking down the barriers, traditional barriers to small business owners keep on top of their finances. And finally, I'd like to show you um, a new area in free agent where we're trying to offer tailored information to um, particular business needs and that will help um, people run their businesses more efficiently and smoothly. Um, can I get the next slide, please? So in particular, I'm going to focus on these last four areas today because I think these are particularly important in these uncertain times. Next slide, please, Josh. Now, we know that many businesses are struggling at the moment due to the ongoing situation we find ourselves in. So before we delve into an account, I'd like to take a minute um, to look at one way that we might be able to sort of off offer you some help, and that's by showing you where you can find relevant information, even in free agent, or anything else, another product perhaps that you use to store your accounting information. If you're considering applying for borrowing through the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, the CBILS, then you'll need to be able to provide certain information such as that that's laid out in this excerpt from the bank's application form. As you can see, it includes information on your expenses and also on your creditors and debtors. So in other words, who you owe money to and who owes you money. Now, if you've just got a shoebox of receipts and invoices, obviously that's going to be a lot harder to gather that information. I'm going to show you how you can get that information easily from free agent or probably from another accounting software as well. It should be similar. Um, but also, if you don't have a free agent account, don't worry. I'm going to show you how you can easily get your information into a free agent account, get your information up to date so that you can get a real-time view of your accounts. It's going to help you make these decisions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to share my screen and take you into a demonstration free agent account and show you um, some tactics I think you can use to help con take uh, control, better control your finances. Okay, can you see my screen now, um, Josh? I certainly can, yes. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> it's all right. Excellent. Thanks. Liz. So this might look familiar to some of you if you've got a free agent account, unfamiliar to others. Um, don't worry, I'm going to try and make sure that this covers um, absolutely everyone as much as possible. So this is just an overview of my test free agent account. It's a limited company account. And you can see there's already some data in there. So I'm getting some nice, useful graphs on, you know, cash flow, money coming in and out of my business, my bank balance, and so on. Now, where I'd like to start is in the banking area here. And one of the um, qualities of useful information, which I'm going to be talking about today, is that it has to be authoritative. In other words, it has to come from a trusted source. So in other words, for the data to be, or the information that's produced, your accounting reports to be useful, the data that is used to create it needs to have come from somewhere trusted. And in free agent, it comes directly from your bank account through um, a bank feed. So it's fed into your account every day meaning that you can trust the information that's been produced in your account and it comes from an authoritative source. And once it comes through, all you need to do is click on these transactions and tell free agent what they are. So for example, if I click on this one here, I can see from the description, it's a rather expensive uh, internet bill there. So I'm gonna explain that as a payment of internet and telephone. Don't worry, I won't, I won't bore you with this too, um, too long. Bank and finance charges, I can see here, so I'm just going to click on that and again select the appropriate category. And the reason I want to show you this, some of you may be used to doing this on a daily basis, others might not. But I want to show you the simplicity of how easy it is to keep your books up to date and how Free Agent actually uses this information here to build out your accounting reports and then how you can use that information to make decisions. So from this um, actual um, banking area here. If I take you to the accounting reports in free agent, and first of all to the profit and loss report, or your income statement as it's sometimes referred to, and um, you'll see that in free agent you can view this in different formats. You can choose quarterly, yearly, you can view comparative P&Ls to view, look at two different periods. Um, but first of all, I'm going to show you just a simple way that you can look at a monthly P&L um, in this particular time and maybe find out some really useful information that's going to help you make a decision. So you can see here that in April, in my particular situation here, and it might be quite familiar for a few people, just now there's been a significant dwindling on income. In fact, there's been no income at all um, in April. But if you look below here, 
In your P&L, you'll see income and expenses. And in the expenses column here, you'll notice that they're largely unchanged compared to previous months. And some of these are going to be fixed costs, some are going to be variable costs. And what I mean by that is a fixed cost will not go up and down in relation to um, your levels of production. So whatever you produce, your product or service, your fixed costs remain the same all the time. A good example might be rent. It's only ever going to go up if you have to hire a bigger premises or something like that. Variable costs could be something like your materials. You'd expect if you're not producing any goods at the moment, your material costs might actually go down. So maybe you don't need to worry too much about those variable costs, but your fixed costs, a lot of businesses we've heard are actually taking steps to try and reduce these. So looking at my profit and loss um, account here, I can see straight away rent, I'm going to use an, as an example, is still coming out. And obviously this is affecting my profit levels and it will be affecting my cash flow as well. So what I might want to do is have a look at my fixed costs here, make a list of the ones that I think possibly I could try and um, action something on the back of um, this evidence. So perhaps contacting your supplier or your landlord, um, or if it's a mortgage, taking advantage of the government's um, um, new measures to try and uh, introduce mortgage holidays, things like that, to try and reduce some of these outgoings to compensate for this lack of earnings. And another scenario that this information might be very useful to you, again, we're talking about the Siebel's application form. When you're applying for borrowing, you'll need to be able to provide information on your business expenses. This is where you're going to find that, and you can see it clearly defined by particular categories. And the next report I'd like to show you is the balance sheet. As I mentioned that, you know, with reduced income coming in, there's cash flow uh, problems or cash flow problems going quickly creep up on a business. And it might be that your, your business has been very profitable throughout the year, but you know, it's hard for a business to operate if you don't have cash to actually meet your demands. And there's a couple of really easy ways that you can actually try and manage your cash flow and using this information in your balance sheet should help you. So that's what I'd like to show you. And it's really important to know what your business owes and owns at this time, at any time, but particularly at this time. And that's what you see in your balance sheet, what you own, so that's your assets, and what your business owes, which is your liabilities. Now with cash flow concerns, it's useful to establish the liquidity of your current assets. And what I mean by this is how quickly you can turn them into cash. So this can help ease cash flow problems by getting more cash coming to the business. So you might look at this, perhaps you've got a lot of stock on hand and your traditional measures for actually moving that stock on, like your shop might be closed, but maybe there's a way that you can look at um, taking a different approach to move that on and try and turn that asset into cash more quickly to meet some of your needs. Another example here, you can see my trade debtors are particularly high. So my customers owe me a lot of money and you know, maybe it's worth me chasing up some of these payments. Maybe some of them are late payments. I'm going to show you how to do that in Free Agent as well so that I can bring some of this money in and turn some of that income into actual cash that can be used in the business. Likewise, it's vital to understand your position in terms of your liabilities, money that you owe to individuals and creditors. If you can delay payment on some of these liabilities, for example, taking advantage of the government's um, deferral on VAT payments, then you're going to ease your cash flow concerns by reducing the immediacy of cash needing to go out of your business. And having this information to hand will help you decide which creditors you can perhaps contact in a bid to delay payments or agree payment terms or longer credit agreements. So that's basically what we're talking about in, in cash flow. One of the main things you're really trying to do to improve your cash flow is try and turn some of those assets into cash or look at what assets are, you'd be able to turn into cash quickly if you needed to meet demand and also by reducing outflows. And just having this information to hand rather than a shoebox of receipts is going to make your decision making far more informed. Now to go into a little bit more detail about looking at your um, assets and, and liabilities in particular I want to look at age debtors and creditors and we talked about um, the need for this information um, when you're filling out your coronavirus business interruption loan scheme form and this is where you would find that to see um, you know what uh, if you've got creditors or, or debtors that are over 30 days for example you'd be able to see that information here and this is basically uh, a list of all the money that your customers owe you at the moment, and you can, in fact, you can click into them and view the actual invoices that are unpaid. 
Now, one of the things you might want to do here, if you see you've got a lot of outstanding debtors, is make sure that you've got, um, you're utilizing all the features in Free Agent to try and take some of the load off here for you, automating these um, payment reminders, for example. I'm gonna show you how you can set up an automated payment reminder email template that's gonna save you having to actually phone your customers and chase up these late payments. And to do that, it's quite simple. You just go into the email template section, choose invoice reminders, add another invoice reminder, and you would see here you can choose to set free agent to send it an automated reminder, let's say seven days after the invoice due date, if it's gone unpaid. And you can then even set it to be a, a recurring reminder so the free agent will continue to send out these emails. And perhaps some of your suppliers use stuff like this. You might be used to having invoice reminders coming into your office or your home. Um, for payments that you need to make, rather than actually having to phone them um, or email them yourself, which we know can always be a bit of an awkward conversation, especially right now, maybe people don't want to have those conversations when we know that all businesses um, tend to be struggling. Once you set up that, it's easy and free agent just to go into each individual invoice and make sure that you've got the setting selected to actually make sure that you've automated these payment reminders. It's just a case of ticking a box. And if we go back to these um, reports, again, age creditors report, this is a list of um, who you actually owe money to in terms of your suppliers. And it might give you a clear list of suppliers that you can contact um, where you might actually be able to agree uh, different payment plans or longer credit. It's gonna try and slow down the need for outflows of cash from your business at the moment. So I mentioned earlier, I was going to talk about uh, briefly how to get started in Free Agent, just to show you how, how easy it is. Even if you already have a Free Agent account, maybe this will just help you show how to get your accounts up to date to help you take advantage of some of the measures that I've highlighted. And there's really a couple of simple steps. The first one you have to um, do is to choose the date that you want to record your um, accounting information in Free Agent from. And this is called your Free Agent Start Date. And we would normally recommend it's the beginning of the latest accounting year or even the beginning of your current VAT period, but it can even be today's date or any date you like, but it's really important that you choose a date there that meets your needs. Once you've done that, you need to make sure that your bank transactions are in your free agent account. So you need that data to be able to create the right information and accounting reports. So when you set up a bank feed in free agent, which is simple, you just click enable bank feed, go through a few steps, you actually get to choose the date that you want to pull those transactions in from. So it'll backdate your accounts. And all you need to do is go through and explain them. You can even take advantage of our um, bulk explain feature to explain them more quickly, get your accounts up to date straight away. And when it comes to setting up your account in free agent, or if you have any issues getting started, or even if you're an existing customer and you have any issues, I'd invite you to get in contact with our support team at free agent. We're always really happy to make sure that people are getting the most out of their free agent accounts and <clears throat> using it in the way that's going to help them make these um, key decisions at this particular time is really important to us. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go back to the slides now. And before we carry on with the slides, I'd just like to launch another, um, another quick poll, if you don't mind. And what, what we're looking at here is we're wanting to know if this particular situation, we've heard it has, um, I've heard from a lot of customers that it has made them think about things that they're maybe going to change um, after this particular situation is over. And I'm going to launch this poll here. What we're looking to, to see is if you've maybe considered diversifying your business or building a larger sort of financial buffer um, to try and make sure that you can, uh, you know, meet the needs if this sort of thing would happen again. So yeah, if you could take a, a few moments, it'd be great. Really appreciate it if you could take some time just to answer those questions. All coming in quite fast tonight, so that's great. And um, the other ones there, hiring an accountant or bookkeeper, perhaps a lot of you might already have one. And um, taking out additional lending or um, looking maybe to add insurance. These are all topics that I'm sure you've all heard quite a lot of. Um, recently on the news, for example. So we'll give that another, another 10, 15 seconds or so for everybody to get a chance to answer and then I'll show you the results. Okay, that's excellent. I'm just gonna end the poll there and the share of the results. 
so that's really interesting. Um, I think that, you know, that that's especially diversifying my business. That's such a, you know, a high percentage. And people might be looking at now, um, I know for a start, a lot of businesses are looking at ways that they can work from home or work remotely or use technology more um, to make them be able to carry on operating um, if an event like this was to happen again. So that's really interesting and I definitely will be taking a bit more of a, of a look at that in, uh, after this webinar. So I'm going to stop sharing that just now. Can you possibly share your screen again? Um, brilliant. Oh, I'll bring you to it. There you go. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so what I'd like to show you here is just another, another little feature. If you have a free agent account, you might have already seen this. If you don't, just to make you aware of it. Um, but if you're a limited company and you've got an RBS and that West business um, account and you've got free agent as part of that package, then you'll automatically see this pre-assessed um, funding uh, limit figure in your free agent account from the bank and you'll be able to click on this link and it'll take you straight into the bank's lending process which might help you sort of get, get ahead of the game there but that information comes straight from the bank and is displayed actually in your free agent account. The next slide please Josh. Um, the last thing I'd like to show you about in terms of features of free agent is this new area that we have created called Radar. Um, Radar is an area your free agent account is designed to help make you more productive and better in business. And our most recent Radar Insight that you can see here lays out the measures the government's introduced um, to support businesses like yours. And it'll be tailored to your location, VAT registration status, whether you're not you have an employer, as well as providing links to our coronavirus hub that we have on our website. It's updated all the time, relevant HMRC and government forms and articles. And next slide, please, Josh. And to summarize, um, I'd like to highlight that there's sort of one overarching theme that I've tried to get across here in my part of the webinar today. And that's about how you can um, use useful information or access useful information, the power of that useful information in terms of how you can make informed decisions. And that's often, um, it's often defined using this acronym, accurate. And I'd like to go through just how Pregent or other sort of accounting software might be able to help you um, meet these sort of needs. For information to be accurate, it needs to be created from an accurate data source. Um, and as I showed you in Free Agent, the information is coming from the, the bank, so it's not third, fourth hand information. This information is coming straight from your bank account. It needs to be complete. So your data um, is imported daily. If you update, your, if you explain your transactions daily, so together with some sort of good bookkeeping habits, your information should always be up to date. Then that's going to help you reduce the anxiety that Josh has been talking about that many of us have felt and allow you to make those decisions on the spot. It needs to be cost beneficial. Um, so obviously for it to be useful, it needs to be cost beneficial. And free agent, if you're a business banking customer um, with RBS or NatWest, you actually get that free as part of your banking package. So I definitely think that that's cost beneficial for sure at the moment, but even for paying subscribers, it's um, something that I could have done with certainly when I was in business. It needs to be user targeted. And that's, if we go back to that, if we talk about that last slide I was talking about there, we show you that's what we're trying to do at Free Agent. We're trying to make sure the information is displayed in your account is displayed in a way that's useful to you. And we're going to great lengths to make sure that it's displayed in a way that's sort of tailored to the actual individual and your business needs rather than just random information that's going to try and meet the needs of all the businesses in the UK. It needs to be relevant. Well, I don't think, you know, I've tried to explain here, having up-to-date information on your finances has probably never been more relevant. It needs to be authoritative, and we've already talked about that need for the data to come from an authoritative source like your bank. It needs to be timely. As I've mentioned again, getting access to your last year's accounts is useful, yeah, but it's never gonna be as useful as having information that's right up to date, that's gonna help you make your decisions today. And it needs to be easy to use. As I've mentioned, free agent in particular, um, one of our missions is to make sure that it's jargon-free, easy to use, um, in written in plain English so that you and I can understand it. It's not necessarily um, in accountingese as we sometimes uh, describe it. So the next slides, please, 
Josh. And yeah, so basically that's it from me today for now. Um, I really want to thank you all for coming along. Josh is going to carry on talking a little bit more about, about this after me. Um, and I hope you found it useful. Um, for those of you using Free Agent, maybe I've given you a bit of an insight into how you can use your information in a way that's going to help you today. And if you don't have Free Agent, there's plenty of options out there. And um, if you want something like Free Agent, my key message has been just to make sure you're in a position to make those informed decisions. And hopefully you've got a better idea about how to go about this. As I mentioned as well, as a NatWest or RBS business customer, um, you get Free Agent for free. Um, you can actually um, Google Free Agent or, or NatWest or RBS and you should take you to the sign up page. However, we're going to include the sign up link. I think Andy, my colleague, has probably shared it there so that people can see it um, there as well. But what I'm going to do now is hand you back over to Josh to finish the webinar. But again, thanks very much for listening and feel free to get in contact with us in the Free Agent Support Team if you've got any questions. Thanks very much, Liam. Uh, really, really useful stuff there. There's so many uh, different tools and techniques that as you were going through that, I was thinking, I wish I'd had that when, when I was running my business. Uh, I may still be running it if that was the case, but, uh, but thank you. And as Liam said, uh, we've just dropped, or, or uh, our colleague Andy has just dropped the, the link to, to get in touch with Free Agent, should you wish to, uh, into the chat function here on the call. So just very briefly, and to wrap up, there's been a lot of information there, um, which many of you, I know there, was, there were a lot of chats and a lot of comments coming in around uh, asking loads of questions, which was fantastic. And thank you for those and lots of different comments. Thank you for those as well. I understand that there's a lot of different tools and techniques, lots of things that you may want to get your heads around and it may feel a little bit like there's a lot to do, which, which, which is absolutely uh, the, the right sort of reaction to have, but it's now how we just put that into a formal state. And so as a final slide, just in terms of what we can do so that your, your finances continue to be an area in which you feel fully in control, it is something that we work through with a, with a lot of our businesses, which is just to break those goals down into measurable goals. So to understand what it is that you want to achieve, how you'll know when you've achieved it, give yourself that target date, but most importantly of all, identify when and if you need that support. Going back to what I was saying before uh, I handed over to Leon, there is that expectation we put on ourselves that we have to be good at everything and we have to be good at everything now. But hopefully what Liam was saying, and as he, as he concluded, uh, the, the free agent team, Liam and, and, and the brilliant team they've got around him, they're here to support you. Uh, and equally, we are here as well at NatWest. So please do feel free to, to identify where that support is. Uh, and we, we are only too happy to engage with you, particularly at this moment in time. But please do reach out should you wish to, but equally break it down into those manageable goals that feel uh, and allow you to feel that sense of progress each and every day uh, to keep you moving forward. So for now, uh, that, that's it from us. Thank you ever so much for, for, for joining in. Uh, if you'd like any more information, uh, you can just search for, for, for Free Agent uh, uh, to, to get in touch with them. Or if you'd like to know any more about the NatWest Business Builder Program, our Digital Business Accelerator, uh, please do uh, search for NatWest Business Builder or Royal Bank Business Builder if you're uh, up in Scotland uh, to, to register and get on board there as well. But for now, um, we just want to say thank you, uh, stay safe, all the very best, uh, and we look forward to, to hearing from you and engaging with you in the future. Uh, for now, have very, very safe afternoons, and we look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.